Now we take you live to the work to the broadcast Bread of Life with Pastor Michael Ball. The Bread of Life broadcast with Pastor Michael Ball. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen, amen, amen. I am Pastor Mike, amen, and this is the Bread of Life, amen. I'm excited about this opportunity, amen. For those of you uh, that are on Facebook Live, amen, we are also on the Tony Gill Radio Show. Praise God for this great and wonderful opportunity, amen, that God has given us. So without further ado, amen, I'm going to get into the word of God on this evening. If you have your Bibles, you will find me over in the book of Genesis in the 22nd chapter, and we're going to be reading starting at the first verse. And it reads, sometime later, God tested Abraham, and he said to him, Abraham, here I am. He replied, then God said, Take your son, 
your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah, sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. And on the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the word for the burnt offering and placed it on Isaac, his son. And he himself carried the fire on the night. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied, the fire and wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. Amen. For the time that we have uh, tonight together, I want to speak to you from the topic of qualities of genuine worship. You see, the word worship, reverence, or devotion to a deity, and it comes from an Anglo-Saxon word meaning worship, meaning worship. And the word also means ascribing worth to a person or object. When we worship God, we are saying God is worthy of all my love, my attention, and my devotion. He is worthy to receive all that I can give him. You see, the word translated worship in verse 5 of the text that I just read for you comes from a Hebrew word that means to bow down, to prostrate oneself. In the New Testament, worship comes from a word that means to kiss the hand in a token of reverence. It was used to refer to a dog licking his master's hand. And it is an image of absolute love and complete trust and devotion. But many people have some strange idea about worship. They believe that it's something that only can be done in church. They believe that it's a time of singing, preaching, testifying, and shouting. And we, 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 we hear parishioners say all the time, we really worshiped on this Sunday. And, and, and you hear them say, wow, a preacher didn't even get a chance to preach. But, but, but action, is this genuine worship? Did genuine worship take place? You see, uh, 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 in these verses that I just read to you, we are allowed to see genuine worship fleshed out. In this terrible time of testing, you see, Abraham shows us what worship truly is. And I want to examine these verses on tonight, amen, as we teach about the qualities of genuine worship. And the first thing we see about genuine worship is, is that genuine worship is submissive. You see, in verse 3, it reads, So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him about. You see, God's command was, was hard, amen? It was hard and it was unbelievable. Yet it was absolutely clear that God said, go worship and sacrifice your son. And Abraham did not hesitate. He did as he was commanded to do. And see, many of us, we, we, we seek excuses, amen, on, on, on why we shouldn't or can't worship. But, but Abraham got up early in the morning as he was commanded, and the Bible says that he went. You see, a true heart for God is marked by obedience. Nothing says more that we are his and that we love him except by doing what he tells us to do. And I also want to add that delayed obedience is absolute disobedience as well. 
You see, the Bible says in John 4, 23, that the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such to worship him. You see, true worship must be in spirit. That is meaning engaging the whole heart. You see, unless there's a real passion for God, there is no worship in spirit. And at the same time, worship must be in truth. That is, it must be properly informed. Unless we have the knowledge of God, we worship. There is no worship in truth. But are necess- both are necessary for satisfying God and honoring him in worship. You see, spirit without truth leads to a shallow, overly emotional experience that can be compared to a natural high. But, 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 but as soon as the emotion is over, when the fervor cools, when, when, when the jerking stops, so does the worship. So, so truth without spirit can result in a, tri- in a dry, passionless encounter that can easily lead to a form of joy- joylessness and legalism. You see, the bad combination or the best means of worship has to be a combination of both aspects resulting in a joyous appreciation of God informed by Scripture. The more we know about God, the more we appreciate Him. The more we appreciate, the deeper our worship. And the deeper our worship, the more God is glorified. When when, when you have truly, amen, submitted to God, you understand that worship is not only something a person does, but worship is who you are. Every obedient moment of our lives is an act of worship for the believer. In our attendance on Sundays, in our attendance on Bible studies, in our tithing, in our witnessing, in our praying, in our studying the Bible, in our praise, in our preaching, in our teaching, you name it. It all is an act of worship. And we must reverence God as God and understand that we were created for, by God to worship him. Glory to God. Second point is genuine worship, amen, is steadfast, meaning it is dutifully, firm, unwavering. In verse 2 he said, take your son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on the mountains of which I shall tell you about. Abraham's life, and, and we have to understand this, Abraham's life is marked by worship. In fact, Abraham had just finished a time at, of worship in Beersheba in Genesis 21 and 33. He was enjoying a time of blessing and prosperity, and he worshipped God. He worshipped the Lord when times were good. But, but, but in this passage, we see that things take a turn for the worse, and God and his ways were not making sense to him. But Abraham, being obedient, yet he still worshipped God. You see, Worship, glory to God. Worship is easy to do when, when, when things are good in our life. But, but, but it's not so easy to do when times are hard. But genuine worship, amen, for the believer, genuine worship looks beyond the crisis of the hour and sees a God who is worthy of worship regardless of how things are going in our life, regardless of what our situation is, genuine worship sees a God who's in control of all the situations of life and is able to bend the knee to him and able to lay out before him and call upon the name and give him glory to God, even though things aren't 
right. Even though things are wayward, even though things may not be as we want them to be in our life, but genuine worship sees past that. Amen. Giving God the glory in every situation, knowing that God is in complete control of everything that is happening in our life, whether they are good or whether they are bad. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And, and, and so I will admonish you tonight. If, if your situation is not what you think it should be, if life is dealing you a, 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 a not-so-good deck of cards, amen, continue to worship God anyhow because your breakthrough is in your worship, amen. And everything that you do and everything that you need from God will come through your worship. Thirdly, genuine worship is separated. You see, when Abraham arrived at, at, at the mountain where God had told him to go, Abraham separated himself from every worldly care, and he went to worship. You see, Abraham came ready to worship, and he let others take care of worldly matters. Because genuine worship shuts the world out and separates itself unto the Lord. Too often, amen, as believers, our worship is contaminated and controlled by the concerns of our daily lives, by the concerns of what's happening in the world. But genuine worship should be the first priority, and yet in our lives, we should do nothing else until we have worshipped him. Because worldly concerns contaminate our worship. And, 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 and when we get into the house of worship, we, we, we allow those same concerns in the world, amen, to, to consume our mind when we come to church. And, and that's why when people have to pump and climb you to get into a, a mode of, of worship. And this shouldn't be, amen. We should be like Abraham, amen. We should gather the things that we need and come into the house of the Lord prepared and ready to worship. We should do nothing else but worship him. Here's the thing. It's important to often we see this in the body of Christ. Many times we, we get into the house of the Lord and, and we see people uh, 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 writing out their checkbooks, amen, uh, they coming and they, they're showing off their new clothes and the new hairdos, amen, and, and, and they're talking to the neighbor. And, 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 and far too often I see people in the moment of worship that think that's when it's time to read their Bibles. I'll never understand why we decide to read our Bible when we get to church and it's time to worship. I don't know about that. <laughs> but praise God, amen. But uh, if that's you, Stop it. Praise God. Stop it. Worship him. Amen. Let everything that that that, that concerns you, everything, let, let everything in you come into the house of the Lord prepared to worship him. Not worrying about who's looking, not worrying about who's watching you, but giving genuine worship unto your God who has done everything you and have given you everything you need in life to be prosperous, amen. He, he gave his only begotten son, amen, as an act of worship, amen, that you may have the right, amen, to, to come into the presence of God, amen, and he can hear from you. And it all starts with your worship. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It all starts with your worship. Hallelujah. It all starts with your worship. Right, write this down if, if you're taking notes. Genuine, genuine worship is sacrificial. You see, this worship was going to cost Abraham very, very dearly. He, he was called to give up the son of promise. And, and, but, but notice how God makes the demand on, on Abraham in verse 2 when he told him to sacrifice his son. And Abraham's response was, yes, sir, I will. He never wa wavered 
at the fact that God was asking him to sacrifice the son of God. You see, he gathered what he needs, and he goes to do what the Lord has asked him to do. He is willing to sacrifice everything he has and everything he has been promised at the command of God. And he holds nothing back. He was truly, sincerely ready, prepared to sacrifice his son as an act of worship to the command of God. You see, genuine worship requires that everything of value be placed on the altar and given to God. So if you are a Christian and you find yourself in a place to where you can't get into the mode of worship, I would encourage you, amen, to seek the Lord in prayer. Shut the doors to the world that's going on around you. Shut the door on your problems and situations. Close the door on all that and focus in on everything that God has done for you and allow yourself to go into a mode of worship that God will get the glory for and God will heal from heaven and God can begin to move in your situation, in your circumstance. So I I applaud you on this evening to give yourself to worship. Let worship be everything you are. Let worship be everything you do. Because in doing so, the Lord your God will honor that. And he will heal from heaven. And he will open up the windows and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. So I, I, I command you, I, I, I implore you, I, I encourage you, I, I'm sincerely speaking to all believers, amen. Worship is necessary. Worship is a must. Worship has to be who you are as a believer. I promise you, when you can begin to give your life to worship and let everything you do be an act of worship, Things, situations, circumstances will begin to change on your behalf. And God can begin to lift you up. God can begin to exalt you. If you would just take the time out of your busy day and give God what is due him, and it is genuine worship, amen, worship that has been that been assaulted and seasoned in the word of God, that your worship will be genuine and that you can give God the glory. Hallelujah. And everything, everything will begin to turn around in your life. But it all starts with worship. I, I think far too many of us, we do not worship God in the manner that we should worship God. We worship God with our lips. And then we worship God with our thoughts. But do you worship him with a sincere heart? But, but because God judges the intent of a man's heart. You cannot fool God with vain worship. So your worship has to come from a place of hurt, of pain, of, of, of knowing that God is God. And, and he's God all by himself. And it is God that has brought you to the place where you are right now. And it is God that is moving in your life. Your worship has to be genuine, passionate, sincere from the heart. And then God can, can, can receive from heaven and begin to turn your life around. Glory to God. We worship him. We honor him. We thank him for all that he does, amen. But it all starts with your worship. Would you worship him on tonight? Would you worship him as you go throughout your day? Worship our God. He is worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you. Father, in the name of your son Jesus, we bless you. We thank you for what our ears have heard. We thank you for this, your word, amen. We thank you for this opportunity to declare your word live on the radio and live on Facebook. We bless you and we thank you right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, 
Jesus. We give you the praise and we give you the glory, Father, in the name of Jesus. Stand on your feet. We give God all the praise and all the glory. He's worthy to be praised. We thank you for our families. We thank you for our jobs and our homes. Lord, we just praise you out of the world, Father God. You many families pray Christ in the name. Best hit music every time you turn us on. Every time you turn us on, there's another hit song coming on. Well, a good day. It has been a good day. I've had some heartaches and pain, a little sunshine and rain, some ups, some downs, some smiles and some proud. But it's been a good day. Yes, it has. Thank you, Lord. Been a good day. Yes, it has. Cause I've got my help and strength. And I know that I'm in time mm -hmm. It's been 
a good day. And I thank God for it. It's been a good day. I thank God for it. I've been lied on and cheated. Talked about and mistreated. Up and down. Had some smiles. Had some smiles. Oh, it's been a good day. Take a little time to thank God for it. I want to thank God for it. I want to thank God for it. I want to thank God for it. All of my help and strength. I need to know that I'm a child. Leave, I take a little more time. I've got my helmet strength. 